So when he got to the, the that was not a joke. I, mean, I know folks that talk to cows. But um, when he'd come to that communal pen and there'd be several flocks there, they'd be all mingled together. That shepherd would come and just start calling them. Come here. Start calling them by name. What would the sheep do? Come. And he'd lead them out to where he wanted them to go. You may say, now what does that have to do with prayer? The Lord speaks to us in prayer. It is a dialogue, not a monologue. One of the most important things that you need to do in your prayer time, and I hope that you are praying. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says we should pray without ceasing. We should be praying all the time, and every time you do pray, there should be a moment, a time period in that session when you just listen. Listen for the still, small voice of God to speak. You know what he'll do as you pray and as you listen? He will lead you. He will speak to you and direct you in the way that you need to go. That's one way that God's leadership in our life as our shepherd is clear today through prayer. Another another way that he, he leads us today and it's clear is through his providence. I love talking about providence. One of my favorite doctrines, one of my favorite things about the Christian life to speak of Providence is God actively working in his universe, in his creation, in your lives and mine. God actively working for his glory and for our good. And those two things are the same. When God is glorified, it is good for us. God is constantly at work in his creation. Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees that in John chapter 5. He said, my father worketh hitherto. They tried to get mad at him for working on the Sabbath. He said, my father worketh hitherto. So I am working. God is constantly at work in the lives of his people. Some things he causes to happen in our lives. Other things he does not cause, but he permits. He allows. He does these things, he works and he acts in our lives by his providence to lead us. This is what I would encourage you to do. When you're trying to make a decision about something, you need to look at the circumstances, you need to look at the situation, and you need to be looking for the hand of God in that circumstance, in that situation. Now, I'm not telling you to go get crazy now. I'm not telling you because you saw a black cat cross the road that you shouldn't go to work today, and that's the providence of God now. It's not what we're talking about. But as you study the Word of God, you'll see how God works in His creation. And as you walk with Him, you'll start to notice circumstances, the way events turned in your life, and you will see His hand. And you'll have the leadership and guidance that you need. Another way that God speaks to us and does so clearly to give us leadership is in this book, the Bible. 6640. 66 books, 40 different human writers that God has inspired by His Holy Spirit. His Word is alive, says 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All Scripture is given of God. It is inspired, God-breathed. It also does a work of leadership. When you go back and you read 2 Timothy 3, we all know verse 16 about inspiration. You ever read verse 17? What it does? Uh, Let me just go back there real quick. Y'all not going anywhere, are you? Second Timothy 3, verse 16 and verse 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God or woman of God may be perfect, Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Why has God given us his inspired word? To guide us in the right way that we should go. Let me tell you what will start to happen. As you read the word on a consistent basis, as you sit under the preaching of the word, as you start to hide the word in your heart through meditation and memorization and those types of things, you'll come to understand principles that God has laid out for us in life. As you understand those things, you know what will start to happen when there are decisions to be made? You won't have to sit there and scratch your head. You'll know God's Word says thus, so there is my decision. 
it will become more and more clear. Now, when I say that we're to use Scripture uh, to seek God's guidance, I don't mean that we treat this like a, a charm or an amulet or something of magic. I don't mean that we just open it randomly and stick our finger somewhere and say, all right, there's a guidance I need. That's, that's treating God's Word like a magic eight ball. If it, they still sell those at Walmart. You know the magic eight balls? Ask it a question, you shake it up, and you turn it over, and there's your answer. God's Word doesn't work that way work that way but what his word does do as you study it consistently as you hide the word in your heart the principles of godly living God's expectations what he wants for us in life become more and more clear than when decisions come up you've got that word and you know the answer he guides us clearly through scripture now lastly he guides us by his people Think of this wonderful truth. We're saved by Jesus alone. It's God's work of grace, unmerited favor, when we believe on Christ. But we are not called to live out our salvation alone. You're a sheep. You're meant to live in a flock. You're meant to be an active part of a Bible-believing church. One of the reasons that God has placed you in a community, in a family of believers, the church, a local congregation, is to help you. It says in the book of Proverbs that iron sharpens iron. When you need counsel, when you need direction, when you're not sure about the will of God, you've got other sheep to talk to. You can go to a brother or sister in Christ and say, you know what, I, I've got X, Y, and Z situation. I don't know what to do. I don't know which door. I don't know which path. I don't know what decision to make. I don't see any doors. I don't see any paths. I don't know what to do. Has that happened to you before? And you talk to that brother or sister in Christ, and they give counsel. They give wisdom. They may share with you a passage of God's Scripture that you hadn't thought about. They may share with you from their life experience how God walked them through a certain situation that was similar, and they help you. That's why it's important. One of the reasons why it's so important to be a part of a Bible-believing church. So when the time comes, when you need help, when you need direction, when you need counsel, it will be there. Can I tell you something, though, just a, a warning about seeking other people for, for counsel? Two things. One, you need to make sure that those folks are saved. And as much as is possible, make sure that they're saved. And I'll say this statement, and you may get mad at me, and that's, that's okay. A believer has no right to go ask another unbeliever for counsel and wisdom. You don't know, if you go to a lost person that does not know the Lord, they don't know the things of God. They're operating to a different set of principles, and you're going to go to them, and you're going to ask them to help you make a decision that will affect you, that will affect your family? It doesn't sound right, does it? But how many times do we do it? And then wonder why, whoops, I made the wrong decision. Well, what kind of counsel did you seek? When you go to someone, make sure that they are a believer. And then another thing, and I'll, I'll close. You need to make sure that that person, what they say is scriptural, and that includes me. If you come to me and you ask me for counsel about something, I hope that when we get done talking, you'll go home and open your Bible and make sure that what Brother Andy said was right. Because I'm capable of leading you the wrong way. Because I'm a sinner. I'm fallible. That woman back there, whoever on that phone, agreed with me. <laughs> make sure that what a person tells you lines up with Scripture. I say all that to say this. Are you bewildered? Do you need direction in life? God wants to give it to you. Your shepherd, Jesus, does not want you to be in the dark, does not want you to go by chance or just make a decision. He will lead. He will guide. I've got some more to share with you from that verse. Will you come back tonight and listen? Right now, we're going to have a time of invitation and decision. Brother Terry's going to come. Miss Debbie's going to play. Maybe today you just... You're bewildered. You don't know. You've got some decisions to make. You don't know what to do. Why don't you just come to this altar and cry out to the Lord? Why don't you just come to this altar and say, Lord, here I am. Lead me.
Here I am. I'll follow. Show me the way. Our God is forever faithful. He will never let you down. He promises in his word to lead you. He will. Or maybe today you realize, I have yet to make the most important decision of all. It is God's will for me to be saved. That's what 2 Peter 3, 9 says. I haven't done that yet. He wants me to be saved. He's leading me that way by His Holy Spirit, convicting me of my sin, showing me the way to go to run to Christ. I haven't done it yet. Well, if today you want to make that decision, I invite you.